All right. Well, thank you so much for being here, guys. Welcome to tonight's call. Um, thank you all for getting on to Zoom. So this is actually only my second time being on Zoom. Um, we did this as our team meeting two months ago, and I don't think any of you all were able to join that um, that meeting, but Jennifer Philly did it as our team meeting in uh, whatever two months ago was, I think it was our April meeting. So we're gonna try to do this more often. I think Desiree is probably very familiar with this type of meeting. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I invited her to join us. Um, Cause I think it's a really good format. Obviously we're all able to see each other. Um, this is great meeting attendance. Usually we only have about, you know, six people at our uh, physical meetings anyway. And if this is the first time I think my whole team has been here together. So if we can get this many people from my whole team together, then this is a wonderful format. So, Yay. Um, yeah. So <laughs> what I want to do is I just want to talk about different ways that we can do things electronically <clears throat> to keep our business going and not just get us together as a group, but also keep our customers uh, involved, get more business, get more recruits and just, you know, really keep our business going. We're all super busy. Um, you guys have kids. I've got kids. Um, we're all just, you know, we all get bogged down in our day-to-day -day life. And um, I don't think that, I know that I'm certainly not using technology as well as I could be. And Desiree is um, on Beth Jacobs' team, which as you guys know is Jennifer's upline. And we met at a leader retreat and she just is a whiz when it comes to Facebook, social media, uh, technology, and just using all of the resources that are out there. And so I've asked her to join us tonight and just talk through kind of how she got started and how she does use those uh, resources to her, you know, the best of her ability and how to grow her business. So Desiree, thanks for being here. And yeah, um, thanks for having tell me. us a little bit about your, your team and your business. So um, my name is Desiree and I started my Pamper Chef business five years ago. Um, my why is because one of my kiddos has um, a rare white blood cell disease and he was having surgeries and feeding therapies and procedures all the time and I went from owning my own company, um, a computer company, and working full time and traveling a lot to becoming a mom. And while being a mom is really awesome, um, it sometimes doesn't fulfill you in the ways that you come from the executive world and then go into the mom world. And so um, I kind of just needed something for myself and I needed something to um, kind of get out of the house and actually enjoy life. And I actually needed to learn how to cook as well. And so um, I, I figured why not try Pampered Chef? Well, um, at the time he was actually doing really well when I joined the Pampered Chef. And then about <clears throat> six to eight months after I joined, and, um, we got fi the final diagnosis and that led to a whole lot more trials and tribulations for us and I realized that with the amount of hospitalizations that we were having I couldn't do cooking shows the way everyone else could but I also was not a, I, I never have never given up anything in my life and so I wasn't about to just pack up the, the ship and and say okay that was not for me so I decided to take my business to social media and so um, I was able to start doing Facebook shows and I was able to do um, different events online that I could do with my customers and actually make the sales that I needed to make and grow my team um, that way, which is kind of how my social media career began. Um, it started with me just kind of experimenting in my kitchen and just kind of posting pictures um, and enjoying you know, how I was actually do, using my tools in my own personal kitchen. Um, and that's kind of how it started. And um, the best part that I can tell you is the beauty of this business is no matter what your life circumstances are, you have the availability to actually customize this business to you, um, which is the best part. So um, what I would recommend is how many of you are on social media with your business now? Just wave at me if you are. Okay. Okay, good. Okay. Um, the, the part that I think a lot of Pampered Chef consultants are missing. Oh, good. I got you. <laughs> the part that I think a lot of people are missing with social media presence in their business is they try too hard. Um, when you see, because I know that nine out of 10 of you probably have some other type of direct sales in your newsfeed, do you get turned off by certain posts that they do or do you think, oh gosh, I would never have said that or, um, you know, 
I don't know about any of you, but, but I don't enjoy seeing stretch marks and bellies in my newsfeed. And so um, one of the things that I would tell you is um, food isn't necessarily going to turn anyone away. Um, so that's kind of like a creative way of actually attracting people to yourself through social media. And that's how I started. Um, I started with um, posting what I was, my, my business page is actually called What's for Dinner. And I started posting what was for dinner. Um, and it kind of went from there. I think that you can, and I'm going to screen share with you guys um, so I can show this to you. Um, pay no attention to any chat messages that may or may not come up while we're on here. <laughs> um, okay, so one of the things I want to share with you is one of the pictures that I did tonight. Can you guys see my screen? Yes. Okay, good. Okay, so this is one of the things that I posted just this afternoon. Um, so I like to keep them guessing. And so I posted a picture of my cutting board filled with strawberries and kiwis. And I asked the question of any guesses of what I'm making. And 18 comments later, um, I actually started posting in the comments, my kitchen assistant, this is the little kid that I have started helping out with in the afternoons and mornings and then I actually posted further down my wedger my mango wedger and then further down from that someone else posted their kid with watermelons um, and then I posted the final product and this is what I made with the fruit that I cut up and if you notice nowhere in there did I say please come buy my pampered chef um, one of the things that I try really hard not to do when it's a um, an interest post is to say, here's my website, come buy from me. Um, you have to pique their interest. Um, I had two um, private messages of people asking me about the mango wedger without saying anything else about it. Um, so I think that you dangle the carrot. Um, if you notice what I've dangled here in this picture, I dangled a forged cutlery knife. I dangled the blue cutting board and um, all the other junk in the background of the picture. But um, usually there's a lot more pampered chef. Oh, let's see if there's like the knife is still here, but usually I have things in the background strategically placed um, when I'm posting things. Um, and then tonight I posted the final product um, and then I actually got a lot more likes and comments and stuff like that. And then tonight's post, um, I did share this one with my team. You guys can use it as well. Um, is this one. It says last week to order the 2015 help with cancer products. They also make great gifts throughout the year. Don't forget bridal showers, wedding gifts, graduations, and housewarming gifts along with everything else in our catalog. Contact me. I do an out of towners for $2 shipping. Um, and for more than, um, for more than three items purchased and then that, I think that the, the goal is to actually pique their interest um, instead of actually um, spilling it on them. A lot of times people will um, spill on people and not realize that they're verbally vomiting instead of piquing their interest. Um, so when you post something on your timeline, um, ask yourself, am I giving them everything or am I asking them to ask me a question? Um, you know, give them the opportunity to want to know more. Um, and the same goes with your Facebook shows. Um, you actually are going to do the same thing with that. Um, have any of you guys done virtual shows yet? I have, but that's one thing that I was going to talk through tonight okay. was just kind of talk about what they are. Yeah, so um, there are a couple different types of online shows. Um, the standard Facebook show, which is about five to seven days, um, and you post once or twice a day and give them the ordering link. And then the other type of show that I'm doing a lot of right now are virtual shows, and those shows last one hour. Um, and I can actually, let's go back over to this and I'll show you one of them. Um, I did this one this past week. Um, That's right. How many uh, virtual shows and online shows do you do as opposed to the regular cooking shows outside of your home? Um, I'm exclusively online right now. 
Um, my kid has been out of remission um, and in and out of the hospital a lot lately. Um, so I haven't had an opportunity to have a, a good um, cooking show schedule um, because of that. Um, and when he is um, in, out of remission, um, I can't predict when I'm going to be inpatient or outpatient. Um, so I can't do that to my hosts. Um, so I choose to not, um, you know, do cooking shows until then. I'll do an occasional, I can't find the event. I'll do an occasional um, freezer meal workshop. Um, but I won't do cooking shows because I can't predict when we'll be impatient and stuff. Okay, here it is. So the way this works is the post, I'm going to go all the way to the bottom. The show is one hour and um, up into the, you schedule the show and a few days before, two or three days, a week out, whatever you decide. I don't set up my event until about two to three days ahead of time. Um, and I only post an occasional post here and there um, on the event. Um, and then just to entice them. Then the day before I post two or three times and then the day of I post about eight times to get them to realize that we're actually going to host the event. So you have a banner. Um, the way that people participate is they actually earn comment um, like points um, for commenting and participating. And then um, I tell them about the pink products and then the host special. And then they actually, I tell them about, you know, when the actual event is going to be. And then there, this one was very active. These people were posting what they were having for dinner too, which was kind of awesome. Um, and then um, I posted a, a taste me piece, is, which is what I call it. It's just a post about what I'm cooking or what I'm doing. Um, I talk about, this one I set up five days ahead because the girl was on travel and she needed to invite her guests way before she went on travel. So I don't normally do them five days ahead, um, but I did it this time. So I played a couple games with them. Um, this one is a guess how many tools there are and then they had to name them. Um, and then they have a bonus if they invite their friends. And then it says um, that this was a cool and serve tray that I did with my fruits and vegetables for the week. And then this starts the day of posting. Um, this is the day of post, and then it goes on to talk about the roundup, and then or another reminder, and then two hours, and then one hour, 15 minutes, and then I ask them a favorite things about one hour out, and then I give them a video to watch, and then the party starts. Now the party starts, and I post every three to five minutes, okay? And they're post like this. Um, these are out of order, so they, we do a roll call post, so everybody talks about where they're from and how they know the host. I do a personal video from, from my home and talk about, you know, introduce myself. Then I talk about the products. I give them a picture of the product, and then in the comments, you can see here, I show them lots of different ways to use them. Right, and actually, I've got a script <laughs> that... Um, uh, Christina gave to me that I can give to everybody that is very easy. You know, it looks like this looks more difficult than it is. Um, once you have a script, you literally are just copying and pasting from the script and it, it makes it very easy to just do this. If you're, um, if once, you're once using, you've done one. Yeah. If you're, if you're using Evernote at all, you can just I, dra yeah. drag and dro drop the images over. Um, all of this, I can give the scripts that I have to Jennifer as well. Um, it's all set up for you and you're just posting and then you give, do a couple giveaways and then you do online ordering. This show in particular is up to $385. Um, and she's closing out tomorrow. So it's pretty self-explanatory. You're just posting. I do an ask me anything post that gives them an opportunity to ask me questions about my job. And then the last post is about how to order. And then I say thank you. And then each day after, I actually thank them again um, for the orders as they come in. Um, and then today's post was, um, today is the last day to order. And so, but you always have those last minute trickle in orders. So they'll post a few things tomorrow. Um, on my what's for dinner page, I have 37,000 fans, and um, that happened quite honestly when the food blogs started taking off about two years ago. Um, but I don't just post food recipes, I actually post tips on here as well. So you can see that this one was shared 256 times 
Um, and I don't always put my website like this one. I don't have my website on, um, but the one below it about potatoes on the grill. Oh, I didn't put my website on that one either. Um, let's see one of them that I do. I don't do it on every one of them only because the more times you put your personal information on, sometimes it doesn't get shared as often. Um, but here's one of them. Like this is how to pick a watermelon. And this one was shared 307 times. So 307 times my personal website has gotten out there to the public. Um, it's, this is not something overnight that I, you're going to do, but, but the, the sooner you start to actually um, do it, um, the more frequent you'll see results with that. Um, this is t I've had this business page for five years. Um, I do have a customer group um, for my regular host. Um, let's see if I can go to that one. So on your what's for dinner, a couple of us have talked about, have you ever paid for advertising for it? Like, Wait, done that's the not allowed with the company. Okay, so you've never done like the promotion or anything like that? No, you're not allowed to. Well, I know like through Pampered Chef you're not, but with that what's for dinner, that's not, you're not doing any Pampered Chef with it, are you? Or is it strict? Are you doing Pampered Chef with the what's for dinner? Yeah, that's my, okay. bus that's my business page. Once okay. you get past 250 fans, you can't t change the name. Um, so even though I'm non-compliant with um, the policy and guidelines, um, I've had lo lovely conversations with um, policy and guidelines in, um, people. So it's supposed to be your first name, your last name, and then independent consultant for the Pampered Chef. But um, once I became popular, I couldn't change the name. Oh. Well, Sam Jen loves cooking, so I guess I'm non-compliant too. <laughs> so, I mean, if you're going to start one, I would start it the right way. Okay. Um, I will tell you that groups right now are better than fan pages, but always ask permission. Always ask permission. As a customer of other direct sales companies, when I get added to a group that I did not ask for, they did not ask my permission, I immediately take myself out of the group and I do not buy from them again. Okay. Um, because they have violated a privacy and that privacy is adding me to a group that I didn't want to be added to. Um, and I'm, I'm a member of way too many groups. So to be added to one more group just annoys me completely. Um, so what I want to encourage you to do is to think about um, what you're posting and how often you're posting. Um, my rule of thumb is one um, business post per six personal posts. Um, so if I am posting about the pink products tonight, then I know that I need to not post Pampered Chef um, for the next six posts. Um, and it doesn't mean that I post frivolous stuff. I'll share something or I'll update my status or I'll do a motivational quote, but it has to be non-Pampered Chef related before I post again. Um, you don't want to be the person that gets blocked. And the more times that you say, oh my gosh, I need $50 more towards my goal, can you help me? The more chances are you're going to be blocked. So um, ask yourself, would you buy from the person if this was a status that you saw? Now, tell us about your team a little bit, because I know that you've got quite a few recruits, obviously. You're an advanced director, correct? Yeah. Um, I have team in 35 states. Um, we have people all over the country, and I have a lot of exclusive um, online consultants. Um, I have one director that is an, um, never done a cooking show and um, is done, you know, does online shows. And I have um, two other directors. One is probably about 75-25% um, 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 cooking shows versus online shows. Um, and then the other one does a lot of freezer meal workshops and things like that. I will tell you that some people think that becoming a virtual consultant is harder because you actually do have to do some more behind the scenes work. Um, I don't mind that. Um, I, I enjoy surfing Facebook when I'm scrolling through my newsfeed and I see someone complaining about their bills or complaining about the fact that they don't want to go to work after a holiday weekend. I can private message them and say, hey, have you thought about Pampered Chef? Um, and that's, that's work, right? Um, because we're on Facebook all the time. Um, and so it gives you an opportunity to actually um, just have a conversation with someone that you wouldn't. Um, my team is really, really big in social media with the Red Stamp app. 
Um, and that's an app that you can get if you have an iPhone or an I iPad, um, and you can create textable images um, and really cute thank yous. Um, the other thing that we use is Zoom, which is what we're using right here. Um, we do a lot of trainings um, through this. We have a monthly team meeting that we do through Zoom as well. Um, I'm trying to think some of the other apps and things that we use with our team. Um, let me look at my phone really quick and I can tell you. Pinterest, I do use Pinterest. Um, I post recipes that I'll create and upload and then I put my, my information on there as well. Um, one of the apps that I use is Google Drive. Um, and, and that's good because you can actually use that to share files with your um, other teammates, but you can also use that to share files with your customers. Um, Evernote, I will tell you, I was late to the game with Evernote, and I'm, I'm so excited that I've actually learned how to use it better now because that's a live update that you can give to your customers. So if you create a file, when you update it, your customers will have the updated information too. Um, so that's really awesome. Um, anything else, Jennifer? Um, you know, I, actually, I want to give the group a chance to ask some questions too. So sure. Let me open it up to the rest of the team here. It's actually everybody here. We're all of us. I'm only a year in the business. My sister is a year in it. Uh, that's Jessica. And then everybody else is nine months or, or newer. So. Yeah. I'm sure everybody like me is in awe. Like, how do you get, how do you get there? <laughs> how do you get all these people? How do you get 35 states worth of a, a team? I think that you have to, um, and I can send Jennifer, I did a video. Um, I actually did, um, I spoke in Baltimore for Pampered Chef and I did a video on prejudging. Um, and it's all about how you really shouldn't prejudge hosts or guests because the best opportunity that we have is the opportunity. Um, the deep cover baker is nice, but the opportunity can make the money. Um, so never be afraid to ask people to join your team. Um, so I'll send that link to you um, when we're done. Anybody have any questions? I can unmute you. I have a question. Um, I guess my question about is about, um, you know, with the Facebook parties and things. I'm just kind of, it's also new to me. And I think that I could really benefit with that just because, you know, most of my connections are not local to where I'm at. Um, and then I have a, a little baby at home. So um, being able to do something that, that doesn't require me to have to go into other people's houses or to even have my house ready for a party is going to be beneficial. Uh -huh. um, but I guess I'm, what I'm not understanding so much is just, you know, is it more so like can people just come to my page and like my page and then would I set up the Facebook party page on my actual web page or am I setting up separate Facebook groups for just individual parties or I guess so, I don't know. Yeah. I look back into that. No, that's a really good question. So here's what you would do. You would, um, we, we call it green dot surfing on our, with our team. And um, you can put a status out there on your timeline that says, hey, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying a new type of show and I'm looking for guinea pigs and you can um, private message them. I don't put it in the comments or you can actually private message people directly and say, hey, um, I'm looking for someone to be a guinea pig for me to try this out. And the way that works is the Facebook show, the one that's five to seven days, um, that's done through a Facebook event and you set that up and then your host invites her friends. Um, and then the virtual show is done the same way but instead of five to seven days, it's a one hour event that you set up on Facebook. So they're both done through the event system on Facebook. And so then you're still requiring them to, you know, at the end of it all, after they participate, they still need to go to your website to purchase, correct? Or yes, mm -hmm. yep, okay. you're sharing the link on, on during the event in the section, the comments section. Um, I can show you that, um, that part that we were looking at just a second ago. Um, one of the things that they're looking at is, it's coming, hold on. So in this event section right here in the middle, can you see that? You create the event right here and it says, what is that? And uh, meaning Kuki is, um, hosting a virtual pampered chef party, and then you put the show ordering link right here in the middle, 
So then they can order any time. They don't have to just be there for the one hour event. They can actually order ahead of time or after the event as well. Um, but yes, that, I do have them go to the website. Um, there is another group online called the Tag Team Party. Um, or the tag team girls, I think it is. Um, they encourage you to create an album and then the people just post comments on there like, I'll buy this or sold or whatever. I just have my customers actually go to my website to place the order for themselves because I don't want to get caught up with having to track down credit cards and things like that. So I would much rather them be the ones placing the order. Does that answer your question? Yes. Yes, it does. Great. And if anybody's interested in doing a virtual party, I'll be more than happy to host a mock virtual party for the group here. Good. So we can pick another time um, and do like a, a one that works for all of us, maybe like nine o'clock mm -hmm. on another weekday, and we'll we'll do a fake one. So you there, Jessica? Yeah. Okay. okay. I didn't know. So I am not very tech savvy, like at all. Um, and th that's my biggest fear is I know how to set up the event and I mean, I know how to pick a picture, post it and whatnot. Um, but then I, I guess my thing is, um, making sure throughout the event actually. So, um, I guess my thing is just making sure I mean, how, like, how, how should the event go? Should it go every, you know, morning, noon, and night, or, you know? Are you talking about the five to seven or the one hour one? Um, I guess mainly the virtual one, the one hour show, um, I kind of think I, I've got that one down. I mean, I think I know the, the big bullet points to put out on that one at least. Okay. Um, but the, but the, for the, for the seven days, I've tried doing, I've tried doing those like save drafts just on my own um, page and I must not be doing something right because they're not, they're not popping up. <laughs> um, so save draft. I'm not sure what you mean. I don't know. I have an option when I use like the PC versus my iPhone to like, you know, put a picture up, type something up and then save it to post in six days or seven. You know what I mean? Does anybody else have that option? Oh, no, that's only on a fan page, not on an event. Um, so okay. on, a, on an event, you so that would actually have to do the posting. There's a couple scheduling tools that you can use. One is Tiny Torch, um, and one is SenseShare um, that you can use to actually, you know, schedule posts for you to take the, you from having to do it every day. But I schedule, I don't, I don't schedule mine like that. I just post it. it Right. I, I, I honestly, this is how my day goes. When my alarm goes off, I give myself 20 minutes in the morning before I wake my kids up and I do my posting on all my events. So it's about seven or seven 30 in the morning. And then in the evenings after dinner, when I'm cleaning up or as I'm cleaning up or after I'm done cleaning up, I usually post again. Um, if I'm in the middle of the day and I have two minutes to myself, or if I'm sitting in the carpool line at, in at school, I'll post then I, I I'm, I get asked the question a lot, where, what's my magic formula? Um, is there certain times of the day that you should post? I don't necessarily agree with that because, I mean, we are one, two, three, four, five, six of us right here, um, seven of us. All of us check Facebook at different times. So I don't feel that the norm is you should post at 10 and 2. Um, I think that it's what, is, what works for you. If your host is a full-time worker, um, let's say she has a 9 to 5 job, Part of your host coaching is where you need to actually ask her, are the people that you're inviting, are they stay-at-home moms, are they full-time workers? If she says they're full-time workers, then you're going to need to gear your post towards the middle of the day, the lunchtime, because people will check their phones during lunch, um, and then you wanted to post in the evening after 7 o'clock, because that's when people are going to be off work. They're going to get the notifications regardless of what time that you post, as long as they've clicked attending. Um, but I wouldn't stress out about the timing. Um, I don't, and some shows go, some shows don't. Um, I don't take it personal anymore. I used to. I will tell you that I used to take it very personal when my host couldn't make it to $200 in sales. Um, but now it's just like, you know what? It is what it is. 
they have to want it just as badly as you do. So that's part of the host coaching, you know, making sure your host has a catalog. Um, even if it's an online show, I still make sure that my hosts have a catalog because they can still collect paper orders. Um, that's kind of important for them too. And I give them, I give them a goal. You know, of course, their first goal is always $200, but like my host, um, the Kooky Show, she has a goal of $650. If she makes it to $650, she gets a bonus half price item from me. If she makes it to $1,000, she gets, um, the host special gets paid for by me. So, you know, I, I, that's in my budget, not your budget. I'm not saying that that's someone who's just starting out should do that, but that's the way I host coach my coach. Okay. Um, is there, when you're going through just real quick on that same topic, sure. if, if I post like, because me, I'm normally up at night. So if I post stuff on um, an event page and let's pretend, um, you know, you check throughout the day and then Jennifer checks only at nighttime after the kids are in bed, right? Mm -hmm. When she gets on, on, on there, is she going to have a notification that says, you know, Jessica posted six times in that. Okay, so that's, I think that's what one of my fears is that people are going to think I'm posting too much during an event because they see six times or something, you know? So that's what I'm saying. You need to break it up. Um, so okay. even if you, you know, like, unless you absolutely can't break up the posts, um, I would tell you, you know, that's something that you can find a way to grab two minutes, three minutes. Um, right. In my, in my iPhone, I don't know what kind of phone you have, but in my iPhone, I have an entire album. Right. I, yeah, I've got the same thing, iPhone. And I've got well, an album. I have an entire album of um, Facebook show posts. <laughs> um, so I have all kinds of posts that while I'm sitting in traffic or my husband's driving or something like that, I can just pop on. Um, I don't follow an outline on my five to seven day shows. I just wing it. Um, whatever's being cooked at my house is the tools that I'm using. Um, or, you know, whatever is happy and, and like barbecue tools are really you know, popular right now in my area because we're just now starting to get nicer weather. So I'm going to post more frequently about barbecue tools. Right. Okay. Well, thanks. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, she muted herself. <laughs> How many people would you suggest um, inviting to these Facebook parties? to the event like I know we have like goals of how many to invite versus how many will actually show up for an actual cooking show but as far as a virtual show goes do you have like a if you want 20 to participate invite 200 I mean I know the more the merrier but um you know, so kind of like your shows that's a really like? really great question um I am not in the norm on the answer for this one um but I will tell you that I typically do you know, three to five thousand dollars in sales a month on online shows. So it, it makes it work for me. I do not limit my hosts. Um, a lot of people lately have been saying that they should exclusively only invite 25 people, or they should encourage their host to only invite their 12 closest friends. I don't encourage that. Um, I don't encourage them inviting all 1.2 thousand friends either. Um, but I do encourage them to hit at least over a hundred. Um, that's my first goal. If I see 39 in the invited list, I say, okay, what, what will it take for you to get to a hundred? Usually their response to me is, oh, I just, I'm on my phone. I didn't have time yet. When I get home, I'll add the rest. That's perfectly fine. But if you notice that one show that I just did, she ordered, invited a hundred and, oh, I didn't screen share. Sorry. There's 193 people invited to that one and we had 26 attending. Um, so I, I think that's a really good statistic. Um, some will, some won't, some will always skip it and not do it anyway. So it, it, it I don't think there's a magic number. Um, I would tell you my magic number is a hundred. Because she's going to be reaching out and, and personally green dotting or personally inviting those 12 to 20, 30 really good friends. Right. Now that I do encourage. Yes, I do encourage her. Um, that's part of the host coaching that you encourage them to specifically invite them and say, hey, don't forget I've got my online show. I give them that graphic. The, my, my virtual party is tonight. 
I do give them that graphic to share in a text message and in a Facebook message too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, I wanna wrap us up because we're past our 30 minutes. And, okay. Um, I don't wanna take up too much of Desiree's time, but I think the main thing I wanted everybody to really think about is, especially just with this format of the Zoom meeting, um, talking about virtual parties, even just talking about parties potentially using the Zoom function. I mean, think about, I know with Portia, you've got a lot of people out of town. Nicole's gonna be um, out of town and have some folks that are located in different states. Um, there's no reason we can't do cooking parties uh, long distance as well using this type of format. Um, use your warm call reports. We'll talk about that in detail if you guys haven't already thought about that, but doing customer connection emails, anything you can do electronically, you know, the idea is to be consistent. Um, Desiree mentioned her phone sitting in traffic. You know, one of the things that I think is really important is that even though life happens and we all get really busy, it's about finding those two or three minutes every day, at least two or three minutes every day when you can think about your business and what can you do today to, to move it forward. And even if it is just posting something on Facebook or sending out an email or making a contact or calling that host or calling that friend back, one thing a day at least to keep yourself moving forward and staying active um, is going to keep you moving forward but it's when the days start to stack up and life keeps happening every day and then it becomes a week and then it's two weeks three weeks the next thing you know it's a month um, that's when it does start to feel overwhelming so i think these electronic um, things are, are ways that we can keep that from happening so hopefully tonight gave you some ideas on how to how to combat that a little bit so um, I'll get us together to talk more about virtual parties. Um, I've done a couple of them. I love them. I've had um, two shows that are over $300 with virtual parties. I've also done um, look and learns, which is ways to get people uh, into the business, doing, you know, bringing in recruits. So we can talk about that as well. But um, that's all I've got for tonight. So I just want to thank Desiree for being with us. Yay. Thank you guys for all showing up tonight. And I'll get us back together soon. Hopefully you'll make it to the next meeting. It's June 1st, Monday. Uh, I actually won't be there because I'm out of town for GE, but Jennifer's got a really good, good meeting plan. So hopefully you guys can all make it. All right. Good night. Good night, everyone.